Al, howdy ho there, folks. How are we doing today? I hope you're all doing absolutely peachy keen, fantastic, having a great day, and all that fun stuff. Today, I wanted to talk just a little bit about uh, right speech and how speech is actually very important in spirituality. See, a lot of us will remember that we need to behave well, and we'll think about like, oh well, you know, I, I say the things that are you know true all the time. I always try to speak truth or something like that. Some people will say things like that, or other people will get away with little white lies and things like that. But the thing is that right speech is actually very important. <clears throat> See, and it doesn't just extend to just you know not saying uh, falsehoods. There's actually something oh, that's also very important about making sure that when you are telling the truth, that you're telling it for a good reason and that you're not telling a truth that is, you know, harmful simply because it's harmful. You know, some people, they like to say that they're uh, very fond of the brutal truth or brutal honesty. But, you know, I have noticed and uh, I think uh, it was Mark Twain that said this, uh, that people are more often fans of the brutal part than the honest part or the honesty part. And see, part of right speech is not just saying the right thing. It's just saying the truth. It's knowing when to say something. You shouldn't be causing derision with your speech. You shouldn't be causing division between people by, you know, speaking ill or, you know, even if something is true, you know, you don't necessarily need to say it. I've heard one Biku describe, um, a situation where, for instance, someone is a go-between before a married couple. And, you know, sometimes if a married couple is in a bad spot, they'll say very negative things about one another. It's like, well, yes. Well, they they may have both said something, and it may be true if you said, yeah, they said X, Y, Z. It may be true, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's right speech. Right speech would not be sharing that information because what good are you actually providing? See, part of it is that, that you need to be mindful of what you're saying and think about what you're saying. Uh, a good little example of this is like maybe you've had a stressful day at work and someone calls and you just pick up and like before you even said anything, your energy is already in like a not great place because you're just picking up and it's like, oh man, this is a stressful work day. What do you need? You know, that kind of thing is like what you're thinking. But what you can do instead is simply... You know, Thich Nhat Hanh recommends doing a practice of just taking a couple of deep breaths and making sure that you're in the right space mentally before you pick up and like really start talking to someone on the phone. So, you know, just take a couple of deep breaths, pick it up, that kind of thing. But when we're talking about right speech, we're talking about speech that is true, but it brings people together and it makes things better for people around us. And it makes it so that we're not actually, you know also just engaging in frivolous speech because you know part of the reason that monks tend to not talk as much is because a lot of little bad things can come out and a lot of like little distractions and things like that come out if you just start talking so much if you just keep talking and 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 talking oh no i hit the thing and talking and talking what you're eventually going to get to is that you are just saying things to say things and that's not really mindful. What you want to be doing is, you know, thinking about what you're saying and engaging with people in a positive way and engaging with people in a way where after talking to them, you're both energized because you were both saying good things that, you know, help one another out. Not just things that, you know, oh, well, this popped into my head, so I'm just going to share this. And then I'm going to share this. And then I'm going to share this and this and this. Now, this is one that I can maybe work on a little bit because, as you may have been able to figure out, the cat likes to talk. The cat likes to talk a lot. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it's not that hard to occasionally take a moment and really examine, okay, why am I going to say what I'm saying here? And, you know, it's part of the reason, actually, that I started to back off of certain Warhammer content. You see, I was, uh, I was making... 40k videos and i was making other warmer videos and i was kind of complaining and i was talking about for instance uh the old world prices are bad or um you know this is something i don't like in warhammer 40k and blah, blah 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 but then i realized that that's not really right speech it's not really right speech to be sharing these negative things and even if i do feel them why reinforce them with that speech it's much better to instead uh speak kindly and speak about things i like or you know if i can't say anything there's always that old idea of just if you can't say anything nice don't say anything at all 
And of course, just to clarify once again, this doesn't mean that you're supposed to be always saying nice things. It's just you shouldn't be causing unneeded division between people. You shouldn't be causing anguish to people because you wanted to say something that's like, oh, well, this is this is true, so I should be able to say it. And that's kind of like an area where I think sometimes in our modern uh, little society, uh, we we kind of have these near enemies of the truth, which is actually a pretty good book by Christopher Wallace, Wall Wallace, I don't know. It's by his son, I, I know who, who it's by. I'm not 100% sure how he actually pronounces his name, but uh, you know, near enemies of the truth. Like we, we always want to speak our truth, but the thing is sometimes that truth that we're speaking is not very useful for us either. And a lot of this also comes back to the fact that you need to be mindful before you can even really engage with a lot of this different stuff. You need to be able to uh, like kind of examine like why are you saying why are you saying something what is what is your purpose behind saying something and be able to stop yourself and you know that can be hard because a lot of times our speech is just spontaneous we'll just be in a situation something will make us think a certain thing and we'll just decide to share it now is this always the best way to go no no it's really not and sometimes it can actually be very bad for us if we end up uh sharing too much or if we just say whatever first comes to our mind you know we should try to take moments to really make sure that we're like really um re like we're really respecting the other person also respecting the other person's time and i know that there are some people as well who have a really hard time which is the concept of uh being silent and letting things just be some people i've known just cannot exist in an area without talking and without saying things and that's not necessarily to say that there's anything wrong with them for that but if you're trying to be mindful and you're trying to be uh, engaged in right speech, it is much, much better to not just babble to babble, to have our moments where we think about what we're saying, why we're saying, and doing things like that. And, you know, we can also really foster love and understanding and sharing with our language rather than, you know, negativity. Like sometimes people, I've, I've known plenty of folks who will be on a job together and, you know, the job isn't the greatest. So next thing you know, they're just kind of doing this thing where they're just kind of complaining about all the different stuff they got to deal with. And it can be very difficult to get past that. We end up in a position where we're just like constantly going, oh man, I can't believe the boss made me do this or I can't believe we had to do this as part of our job and things like that. But really and truly, we shouldn't be fostering that kind of speech. And we shouldn't be just, you know, keeping that kind of speech always like coming forward with us. We should instead be taking moments of rest and really trying to understand, you know, what do we not like about this? And rather than simply going, oh man, I hate this and I can't believe this is blah, 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 and going on and on and on about that, rather than fostering that negativity, it's generally much better to instead foster positivity and, you know, try to speak about what is good and not focus on what is so negative. And it can be kind of hard, I understand, for a lot of us. Some of us are in a bad situation, and it can be very, it can feel very nice to commiserate over a situation that feels bad or feels like we're being in, in like, uh, a negative position. And, of course, this isn't to say that you can't say anything negative. Sometimes it's really important, you know, like if you're a worker and you think that your rights are being violated or you think that you deserve better, sometimes it's good to commiserate in a way where you're trying to basically like unionize and things like that. That can be good. But simply speaking about how negative things are for the sake of speaking about how negative things are is not a worthwhile use of your speech. It's much better to instead have your speech uh be focused on what can be brought about through a situation what good can be brought about through focusing on a situation and going through a situation rather than just talking about what is like negative and another thing that we should consider is that a lot of this also comes from right intention like we need to be having and examining our intention behind everything we're saying and, you know, when I say everything, I do technically mean everything, but that's not necessarily like, you know, if you say hi and bye, you don't necessarily need to sit there and be like, what did they mean by this? Or what did I mean by this? 
Sometimes, sometimes it's just saying hi and bye, but right speech and most of the practices on the eightfold path really start with the right intention. You're trying to start by having the intention to do something good and not something that's for ill. You're trying to spread kind, loving kindness. You're trying to spread positivity. You're trying to spread understanding. You're not necessarily trying to spread you know, misinformation or anything like that. You're trying to make things better rather than making things worse. That's where the really important stuff comes out. And you need to make sure that you have that intention and to think about your speech and be mindful of your speech as you're making it and think about what exactly it means to have speech that goes, or what exactly you're trying to convey with your speech and why you're saying what you're saying. And this is also why mindfulness is so important to pretty much any spiritual practice is that you need to be able to examine your actions, examine why you're saying what you're saying, examine why you're doing what you're doing, and making sure that your intention is good. Making sure that your intention is not to cause harm and not to make things worse for certain people or better for, or, you know, just better for just yourself and not for others. And, you know, t t treating everything in like a us-them mentality. You're trying to create a to create a better world with your speech. You're trying to create a better world with your understanding. You're trying to create a better world by making sure that when you say something, A, you mean it, B, it's it's a good thing to be said and it's a good thing to repeat and bring about in the world and things like that. And also making sure that you're not causing division for um, any reason if you can help it. There are times when you, yes, you do have to say harsh truths, but make sure that when you're saying harsh truths, A, you have the proper intention, and B, make sure that you think it will actually benefit whoever's hearing it rather than just, you know, causing harm. This is part of what is so important with right speech. And so as what is so important with intention and understanding in our spiritual paths. And I would highly recommend that we all try to be more mindful about what we're saying, what we're doing, why we're saying what we're saying, why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, okie dokie. Okie dokie. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little video here. Oh man, I got smacked. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed this little video here and I hope that you can take time and a moment to really examine your speech throughout the day and try to make sure that you're doing um, well by your speech and that you're trying to help others and not tear anybody down. So uh, thank you so much for stopping by. I want you to know that I love you and God loves you and we should all foster loving kindness to the world. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Bye. I love you. Bye. Have a great one. Bye.